uh, is about what our youth is and, and who we are today as, as a country, as a, as a universe. Congratulations, Reggie Jackson. You are CUBE alumni. Live from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida, it's the CUBE. Covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. And welcome back to Orlando here on theCUBE. We continue our coverage at Splunk.com 2016. We're back again, so is about 5,000 attendees. Uh, keynotes, well attended, a lot of enthusiasm here on the show floor, a lot to talk about here on day two. I'm John Walls along with John Furrier. John, good morning to you. Good morning, great, uh, great night last night, great party. Obviously Splunk always does it right at these events. We're two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. It's been great so far, day one, packed with a combination of Splunk executives around the key areas of their growth strategy as well as customers. Well, before we get on, you said great night last night. You were like a roller coaster maniac last night. I right? went on one, one time. Greg Stewart actually went on but one time. But you did but the tower and you tower did all that stuff. I actually straightened my back out a bit. You know, I'm getting old, good. so I feel good. It's going to the chiropractor, getting thrown around. Uh, but certainly Splunk rents out the entire Hollywood studios uh, for their customers. Really a top shelf, you know, event. Um, Splunk celebrates their customer activity at these events. And they have a rabid customer base. They're very active, certainly happy customers growing with Splunk. Splunk is doing well as a company. Um, a new way to do things. So you know, Splunk always has a, uh, a bar that they always seem to go above every time. So, you know, they pride themselves on working hard, playing hard, it's kind of the ethos of the company. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, all great people, all great time, and uh, you know, everyone's smiling, everyone's having a good time. And I think that's, you know, what life's all about. You know, you come, you know you're in the tech business, um, you, have, you feel good about it mm -hmm. if you're doing good stuff. So Splunk obviously doing well. Company has uh, a lot of firm ground under their feet with big data, the trends of big data, and of course, cybersecurity is really the core issue, and that's really kind of their, their, in my opinion, their opportunity. Yeah, I mean, you're talking about a new way of doing business, and um, uh, we, we talked about yesterday about the adaptive responsive initiative, right? This collaborative effort. You talk about partners here. You've talked about the, 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 uh, the business climate. You talked about customers, and it's all so positive. But, but collaborative, I mean, it's, it's cliche, but it really is true. It seems at like every, at every level. they've got an olive branch out for everybody. Well, it's, it's at every level. I mean, I, just as a highlight, last night I was with Nick Sturio, who's been on the board for 11 years or so, maybe more, I forget the number, but he was a board member, he's now long, longer on the board. He invested, not a lot, under $10 million investment, made it like 600 million. Mm -hmm. Great investment, obviously, for Nick and Ignition Partners, one of the best VCs um, in Silicon Valley and in, 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 uh, Seattle. Um, but it shows that he comes to the event, he still is part of the community. Mm -hmm. I met with a lot of these um, Splunk experts. They wear the hats to show that they're, you know, the, uh, the, the Splunk experts. They're so engaged. The employees are engaged and the customers are super happy, but it's collaborative. And I, and I think that this is an indication of the opportunity that they have because it is collaborative. The customers are now using Splunk in a way that they never thought they probably would be using it if you ask Splunk uh, employees and customers just five years ago if this would be the outcome of how Splunk has kind of hit a trajectory. So, so like how so? I mean, what, what are they doing now you think that they didn't think they'd be doing three, four years ago? Well, it's a classic case of a good growth strategy with innovation, uh, an innovation strategy built into the growth strategy. And that is the secret of these tech companies that I look for is, is their growth strategy pegged to just um, financials, and execution, or is the growth strategy, execution plus innovation strategy intersected together? And Splunk has both, and I'll give you an example. The company has been using, uh, customers have been using the Splunk product for you know, log data, big data at that time, but it's morphed and the trajectory, so they're building on top of the functionality, layering on more capability, more and more as the years go on. Splunk continues to make announcements in a way that helps customers. But now the, this opportunity that Splunk has is what I call the fabric of um, this new digital uh, technology or transformation, and that's security. And so what's happening is interesting. The Splunk customers are using the Splunk product to extract data and surface it real time and into applications. But also a new dynamics coming together where, we, we teased it out yesterday, where we observed and kind of first ones to call this publicly and pointed out is that the customers are coming together to form a social network. 
Mm -hmm. So this adaptive response announcement today is interesting because it shows the proof points that Splunk is connecting the dots mm -hmm. on a growth that probably wasn't in their playbook a few mm -hmm. years ago, and that is using the Splunk fabric to bring together multiple companies in a collaborative way mm -hmm. to fight cyber, which is fraud, threat detection, and, and potentially the impact of fraud and breaches, which is, can be catastrophic for business. Mm -hmm. So this is forcing companies to change the way they handle data. Mm -hmm. And it's really, really brand new um, dynamic, um, has traction, and yeah, it's super exciting. I mean, if you're a Splunk customer, you have a lot of headroom and you're an employee, you got to work harder because you have more growth. Um, so, you know, it's a challenge on all fronts, but still, I think Splunk's up for the task. Well, let's hit the cyber thing because I, I, we heard again from some guests yesterday, we heard the keynotes this morning, we'll hear from some guests this afternoon uh, as we continue our coverage here. You know, if you don't have that security, if you don't have safety, if you don't have peace of mind, right, in operation, you got nothing. You have the best data analytics in the world, but if you have intrusions and threats, whatever, so you say they're all in. And, and, and reflected that in how they've, they've uh, formed their enterprise, you know, security, enterprise security, yeah. and what they're doing with ITSI and all those things. Well, I mean, the thing that's going on in the industry right now, for people out there watching, and in the either industry or customers of Splunk or other vendors, is that the, 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 data, the data analytics business has always been about what happened. Hey, let's look at the data and figure out what happened. But as technology progresses with real time, in memory, all these new um, abilities to surface disparate data from different databases, where applications can take advantage of the data, it's a lot more than just what happened, it's about what's happening, and then using predictive and prescriptive techniques, AI or machine learning, mm -hmm. however you want to classify it, to get in front of what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So you have the evolution of what's happened, post-mortem kind of analysis to what's happening to what is going to happen and what can I do to protect that. So that is to me a significant real dynamic that's going on, people are fired up about it, and it has to do with the combination of the data, the fabric that we talked about, and also getting in front of it. Because security isn't about what happened, because when you figure out what happened, you're already done. Right. You're toast. It's already happened. It's already happened. In right. fact, most people realize they, that they've been hacked after the fact. Right. So all the top security brains in the industry entrepreneurs, we're going to talk to one today, the one that was invested by Splunk, are doing new things. They're providing um, a cat and mouse kind of software game where they're actually creating new techniques to thwart um, malware and, and the techniques that the bad guys do. Mm -hmm. so, so you're starting to see the leveling up of the technologies because you have compute, you have cloud, and virtual machines and other techniques where you can actually spin up techniques to thwart the bad guys. Mm -hmm. So when you hear, I heard this yesterday, I thought about it last night, that, that many people in, in the space think, we don't have the, the talent, the firepower in terms of talent, we got to leverage technology better. Uh, we've got to, and we've got to be disruptive in how we approach this, because the, way, the old way of doing it, it's not cutting it. Yeah, the old and, way of doing top down, uh, this is our policy, this is our data policy, boom, you know, security policy, build a door, put a moat in there, gone. You're starting to see the combination of top-down policy from organizations with a bottoms-up collaboration and enablement with technology like Splunk Systems to create a dynamic of, a, of, of polarity between organic execution and top-down. Well, what does that mean? That means, yes, they're going to be undermanned in these, uh, these cyber attacks and security threats uh, and intrusion and, and fraud. However, with machine learning and automation, you start to see the beginnings of an AI-like approach where you can scale up the human interaction, the policy, mm -hmm. with organic collaboration, which Splunk's doing, with an algorithmic approach that can scale up with the cloud, with, machine, with virtual machines, and other network type techniques, we can start getting at these bad guys. So you essentially create a clone army, if you will. It's kind of like Star Wars, the Clone War, right? I mean, right. you can create clones, you can create situations where technology can work for your, uh, for your benefit. That is where the action will be, that is where uh, I think the hot startups will come out of, and that's where the big companies like Splunk will start to really start to take advantage of that execution. And that's going to be the, the key spot. The old way of just throwing bodies at it, done. Not going to work. Not going to work. You know, one thing that we, we Hasn't just, worked. We hit on yesterday just a little bit, but I want to touch on it before we, we uh, get ready to end our guest lineup today. The Splunk for Good. A uh, hundred million dollar commitment over the next 10 years. Um, it says a lot, does it not, about the kind of the DNA of the company and, and 
how it sees or what it sees as its role in terms of, yeah. of providing for, uh, I guess, a foundation for good I stuff mean, to happen. I mean, I think this is a really big deal, and I'll tell you why I think it's a big deal. The Splunk for Good is a, is a highlight of an industry trend that's going on where you're starting to see, see authentic, philanthropy and good being done by companies and individuals. Even SiliconANGLE, the small little self-funded, self-financing growth company, us, we're doing some philanthropy. We have a fellowship with the Tech Truth, mm -hmm. which is a nonprofit part of our business, where we're using um, dollars to fund journalism. You're starting to see other companies do it. We saw Oracle at Oracle Open World doing the same thing. It used to be philanthropy was a checkbox, get a tax write-off and say, hey, we're doing good, we're not the evil corporate guys. But now in the age of social media, we are all social animals, so, so the combination of the psychology of doing good, mm -hmm. it feels good, it makes your life better, but more the impact of it really matters. So you start to see companies weave in these initiatives that actually make sense for their business, mm -hmm. that actually do good for people, and actually help the employees and customers feel good about it. And what that does, it creates a great place to work, it creates a great environment for collaboration, and again, it's a social dynamic, it's mm -hmm. a, we're all social animals as humans, and I think this is a new dynamic. Mark Zuckerberg donated $3 billion uh, into curing all diseases, and of course, you know, that's authentic because they're going to start applying some machine learning and of course, if you live longer, you can use Facebook longer. <laughs> you can argue that's authentic, but this is a new dynamic. And I don't think that the Splunk for Good is a you know, throwaway initiative. Right. People are pumped about it. I heard that uh, from a source inside Splunk was a standing ovation at the all hands meeting inside the company. This is a real uh, initiative. And I think it's table, it will become table stakes. Uh, Reed Hoffman, who is the founder of LinkedIn, who's now a partner in Greylock. I just saw an article on Business Insider that was talking about his philosophy of living a good life. Mm -hmm. It was kind of out there, touchy-feely, but you know, Reed's a solid guy, and, and his philosophy is always give back. And that's the karma of Silicon Valley. I think when you have that quid pro quo goes away, where it's implied, I don't want anything in return, good stuff comes back. So mm -hmm. I think we're starting to see that network effect of how we're all connected and companies now are taking advantage of it. It's a really big deal. I'm super proud of Splunk for doing it, we're doing it, and it makes sense for business. Yep. Well, I think it's the right word, authentic, right? It's got a real feel to it. So, uh, and you get that feel about the company here. So, more about Splunk coming up. Of course, they have partners, we have uh, customers, we got a lot of Splunk people coming on as well. Here on theCUBE as we continue our coverage from Orlando, back with more in just a bit.